List and tuple. To most of you, these two data types are almost synonyms. You might know that one is modifiable while the other isn't, but that's not even half the story. So in this video, let me clearly explain to you what are the differences between those two and why tuples are honestly underutilized in my opinion. Let's start with the commonalities. Both lists and tuples are used to store a collection of data. So whereas an integer or a boolean contains a single data value, lists and tuples can contain multiple data values. How do we identify each data value? Well, by its index. This means that order matters in both of these data types. The list 1, 2, 3 is inherently different from the list 2, 1, 3. And the same goes for tuples. So far, so good. Both data types can be looked over, both have an index method that returns the index of a given value, as well as a count method that returns the count of a given element. And from here on out, things start to diverge. You probably already know that one of the key differences between lists and tuples is that lists can be modified but not tuples. To verify that, let's define a list and try to modify its first element. As we can see, this change is successful. Now trying the same thing but with a tuple will actually result in a type error, clearly stating that tuple object does not support item assignment. Well, it's not only that, but tuple objects don't support any kind of change to their value. In fact, we can see all the attributes and methods of a class by printing dir on it. So let's print dir of list and dir of tuple, and we can already see how all methods such as append, clear, or insert are all missing from the tuple class. Why is that? Well, simply because tuples are immutable, meaning their implementation explicitly denies them from changing their value. And lists, on the other hand, are mutable, meaning their values can be changed. If you want to learn more about mutability and how it can affect your code in more than one way, I would highly encourage you to watch my video on that topic right after this one. But for now, let's resume with the differences as I initially told you that isn't even half the story. You've already seen in all of these examples how lists are defined using square brackets and tuples using parentheses, right? Well, not really. While square brackets are in fact required to create a list in Python, parentheses on the other hand are completely optional for tuples. In fact, if we take a look at the official Python documentation, it is stated that tuples are simply values separated by commas. There is no mention of parentheses. And here we can directly see an example of a valid tuple definition. Parentheses are actually only required when we have some form of syntactic ambiguity, such as in this example. Now, I'm not telling you to skip parentheses while defining tuples, quite the opposite in fact. It's a great readable way of knowing that we're dealing with tuples. What I'm hinting at, however, is how Python treats tuples in a special way. There's a whole semantic behind using tuples in Python as we will see in a second. What's happening here in this line is called tuple packing, where all these independent values separated by commas are packed together into a single data structure that turns out to be a tuple. The same behavior can be observed when we have a function that returns two things. For instance, let's return here 5, 10. If we print the output of this function, we can see that Python actually packed these two values into a single tuple, which is the thing returned from the function. Now comes the question, why tuples, why not lists? And it all boils down to semantics. When a list is defined, it is assumed to contain a sequence of independent elements that are essentially of the same type and each representing a different instance of that same type. For example, if we have a bunch of grades, we can store them in a grades list where each element will be an integer grade. If we have a bunch of names, we can store in a list names a sequence of string objects. Each element is essentially a different instance of the thing we are storing in this list. And this is the intended use of lists to contain homogeneous sequences that are looped over, modified, removed, and appended to. 
you definitely can have a list in Python where the first element is an integer, the second a string, the third a boolean. But I would argue that this is semantically bad as this doesn't follow the philosophy behind lists. Like we can't even loop over this list and apply the same code on each element as they are of different types anyways. Now, a tuple on the other hand is expected to contain a sequence of elements, oftentimes of different types, where each element has a different role, but are all related and represent together the same instance. For example, if we have xy coordinates, it would be best to store them in a tuple. Here, even though both elements are integers, they are not independent instances at all. Both x and y together form the coordinates, and one alone doesn't have much meaning. Here's another example where a tuple is used to store data about a person. We have the first name, last name, age, and a boolean representing whether this person is subscribed or not. I see you, John. So here, once again, an individual element doesn't have much value on its own, but it's the overall sequence that represents this person. When working with tuples, the intent is not to loop over it and do some processing on each element, not at all. The intent is to use its elements corresponding to their semantics. For instance, if we want to print the full name of this person, we would print person of 0 plus space plus person of 1. If we want to use the age to check if this person is over 30 or not, we access person of 2. So each index has a meaning, which is different from other indices. Thus, tuples are intended to contain heterogeneous sequences where each index has a different role. In fact, in the built-in collections module, there's a named tuple type that basically allows you to define a tuple whose elements can be accessed by name rather than by index, further making the point that each position in a tuple has a certain semantic attached to it. And that's why it makes sense not to remove or add elements to a tuple. It also makes sense not to modify current elements as all this data is what represents and makes up this person. If a value changes, it means it's a different person we're referring to. I'm not telling you that age doesn't change or that John can't subscribe, but during the execution of this code, this is the person instance and we'll just use it as it is. If it's something that needs to be updated based on some conditions or some user input, then using another data structure might be more appropriate. Now, if you don't want to be like John and avoid being called out in my next video, make sure to subscribe and check out my video on mutability up next. And as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python.